Hello friends, today I'm going to show you how to change your power supply. Well, why would you change your power supply, you may ask? Couple reasons, either your existing power supply may have gone bad, or you may be upgrading to a newer graphics card that's going to suck up more juice from your power supply and you may need a more powerful one. Stay with me and I'll show you how to change your power supply. Now this is the computer I use as a server at our house and recently due to some electrical malfunctioning the power supply went bad so I'm going to upgrade it as well and show it to you. And I'm upgrading from a typical power supply that has all the cords hanging from it to a modular power supply where you plug in only the cords that you need onto the power supply so there's more room to breathe in your case. First we'll have to open our case. This case can open only from one side, so I do not have to remove the whole thing. I just have to open it from the side that's away from the motherboard connectors. I'll have to remove the screws that are holding it in place. And then remove the case cover. One thing to keep in mind if you have fans on your side cover, pay attention if there is any cords coming out. Follow the cords and disconnect them. Once there's no cords, we can remove the case cover. Now this is the inside of the case, as you can see, pretty ugly, so many cables hanging out and that's one reason I wanted to go with a modular power supply. This is my power supply, your power supply may be either at the top or the bottom in some newer cases. First you want to remove all the cables that come out from the power supply. Your optical drives will need power, I have a DVD writer and reader in this one removing these first then my hard drives are using power I'll remove them as well as you remove just pull the cables out so you can see what cables are left to unplug looks like there is one fan power cable I'll disconnect it once all the small cords are out of the way let's look for the big ones I see one connector to the motherboard here, look at it, on one side you'll see a ridge, push down on it and then pull it back gently. There's one more big connector to the motherboard, gently push on the clip and pull it back. Now that all the cables are removed from the motherboard, it's time to remove the power supply itself. Looking at the back side of the case, these four screws are what hold the power supply in its place. So we'll loosen them first. Hold on to those screws, you are going to need them while you are putting the other power supply back in place. Now we can pull the power supply apart from the case. Now it's time to put our other power supply into its place. When you are putting the other power supply in, a couple things to watch out for. First, the side where the cords are coming out, in my case where the connectors for the cables are, needs to be facing inside. And also the power supply's position may depend on your case, it's going to be either up or down, but side with the fan is going to be facing towards the motherboard itself. Align the screw holes with the holes on the case. And while you hold the power supply with one hand, you can put the other screws back into place. Once you get a couple screws in, just start tightening slowly, don't tighten too much, you may have to move it around, but this is just for stability so that the power supply will not fall into the case accidentally. Once all the screws are in place, you can go ahead and tighten them. Now the power supply is in place, we can plug in the cables. I'll start with the motherboard connectors, well how can you tell it's for the motherboard? In my case. The cable says MB on it, which stands for motherboard. And usually these connectors will not really fit into anywhere else. They go in one way only. Just push it gently and if it fits, it's probably the correct socket for it. On the other power supply, there was one more for the motherboard. So I'm going to look for an identical connector that will go on the motherboard. Like this one. In this case it says CPU2 and that's exactly what it was. It was right next to my CPU over here which provides some additional juice for the CPU. 
On the power supply, I'll look for the socket that says CPU one. And plug in the other side onto the motherboard next to the CPU. The power supply also comes with VGA cables. These are for the graphics card, but since this is not really a graphics intensive computer, I don't have a powerful graphics card that needs its own power supply. So I'm just not going to use them. Next I'm going to connect my hard drives. There's typically two types of hard drives. They may be SATA or PETA. The connector types are slightly different. The SATA is a tin connector, while the PETA is the old style thicker connectors that have rounded edges inside. My hard drives are all set up, so I'm going to use one of these cables to connect all the hard drives. One side goes onto the power supply, and the other side goes onto the hard drives. The hard drive side goes only one way as well, so don't push it too hard, but if it's going in gently, then you are putting it in the correct way. Next, I'll connect the optical drives. My optical drives are the old type power connectors, PETA connectors, so I'm going to use these connectors to power them up. And PETA connectors, as you guessed, go in only one way as well. When I was removing the old power supply, there was one fan connector which used such an adapter from PETA to small fan connector. I'm going to plug this into this connector over here. And everything is in place. Now we can close the case. Of course, you typically don't want to leave cables hanging like this on the inside. If you have cable ties, you may want to just tie them together nice and neat so they aren't just hanging around. I have some Velcro that came with the power supply so I'll use that to hold them together. And I'll neatly tuck in the other cables. Now I can close the case. Before I close the case, one last thing to do is plug in the side fan onto this power supply. Case covers the lines. Now I can push it in. And last thing to do is put the screws for the side cover back into its place. And the project is completed. Now this may have had too many steps, but it's really not that difficult. I hope this video has been helpful. If so, please give it a like and let me know what you think down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more.